the other thing I wanted to use the opportunity of having uh, Dr. Fuller here to talk about um, was Buddhism in relation to life after death. Mm -hmm. I know life after death is a big issue in um, A-level mm -hmm. uh, religious studies mm -hmm. and a lot of people think about life after death. Mm -hmm. Now, Buddhism is very diverse and the, what the Tibetan tradition says and what Thai <coughs> tradition says are not <coughs> the same. Yeah. Are there any general generalizations we can mm -hmm. make about what do Buddhists believe about mm. life after death or happens when you die? Okay, so that's a very general question to do with Buddhism in the Indian religion in general, as is well known, mm. the notion of rebirth. Now, yeah. in some Hindu traditions or Vedic traditions, we might use the term reincarnation. Something reincarnates as a self, an Atman, which reincarnates. Yeah, and lots of people use the term reincarnation when they talk mm -hmm. about Buddhism as well. Yeah. If I, I get the impression of what you're saying, that mm -hmm. that's not preferred term in Buddhism. Yeah, because it suggests that something is reincarnating, being formed in the next birth, or something is going from one life to the next life. In Buddhism, it's clearly problem problematic. What is transmigrating? What is being reborn from one life to the next? So, isn't the repeated incarnation of the mm. same item or mm. Atman, self yeah. in Hinduism, uh, in, within a Buddhist setting? So, that doesn't really work in Buddhism because one of the central teachings is anatta or anatman. There is no self transmigrating. But clearly, they, they also hold to the idea that there is certainly rebirth. So, there is rebirth. There's a continuation of some sort, but what so, is reborn is neither the same nor different. So Buddhists can talk meaningfully and will do about mm. in my previous life, or I hope mm. in my future life, or yeah. I hope that my recently <clears throat> dead aunt has gone to has got yeah. a good life. So that makes mm. sense. Yeah. But there's there's some process mm. by which they're linked. Yeah. So in the popular discourse, we Buddhists certainly talk about, and they have an entity transmigrating or being reborn. In a popular discourse, in uh, so there's a distinction between the populist discourse in which yeah. people talk about it like reincarnation a bit, yeah. and the more philosophically nuanced account you get in the canon and the yeah, text. Of course, philosophically, there's, this is highly problematic because if there's something being reborn, then there's something permanent in the in the Buddhist universe. So this is why Buddhism has a problem because there's something permanent. There's something to be attached to, so it brings in all sorts of problems. So it's a kind of changing co causal continuum, mm. not yeah. too many... Yeah, this, this is a classic question in Buddhism, a classic kind of undergraduate essay or exam question mm. would be to do with how can there be rebirth without a self transformation. Yeah, I'm sure I've asked my students, right, if, there is, if yeah. uh, analysis is true, mm. then what is it that is reborn? Yeah, so an anal analogy is often used of a, of a flame, a candle is lit, and that candle lights the torch, but at the same moment... The candle is blown out, so the flame is going from rebirth to rebirth, but is the flame the same, or is it different? Now that may be helpful, but at the same time, are they just kind of... Yeah, I'm, I'm all, is, I always find the, the, water? the flame image yours mm. confused me, because I don't mm. quite understand. I'm not sure yeah. quite, the yeah. image that I sometimes think about mm. is the fact that even, this is probably being a parent and mm. having kids, mm. and now mm. teenagers grow up, yeah. is thinking, well, when you, even within one night, yeah. you don't say the same. That three-year-old that yeah. used to trash my house yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Exactly, yeah. They've been replaced yeah. by this huge teenager yeah. mm -hmm. who now trashes my life in other ways. Yeah. So Buddhists but, would often be fond of talking about rebirth in this very life from moment to moment. Yeah. And I think that's very helpful. Yeah. So the person who, when I go up today and came mm -hmm. here, the person who got up today yeah. is not quite the same yeah. as the person who went to bed last night. Yeah. They're a tiny bit wiser, certainly mm -hmm. older, more yeah. wrinkly, weaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, there's been you know, yeah. there's been a period where yeah. I've gone through a process of continual change, and when I lie on my mm -hmm. this body down for the last time, yeah, and die, and then I wake up again mm -hmm. as a baby, mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, um, or human baby, hopefully yeah. if I'm virtuous yeah. enough, not as a sure. yeah, pig but, piglet, yeah. Yeah. whatever, uh, cockroach. Or... I'm sure I won't be. But... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, um, but yeah, and um, that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that the idea of rebirth can sometimes be better yeah. got across by thinking about, mm. especially when I'm talking to 18-year-old students, mm. is that yeah. the 12-year-old you used to be yeah. is long gone. Yeah. They've I been think, replaced by you. I think that's an incredibly helpful way of looking at it. And Buddhists do this themselves. So yeah. They talk about rebirth from life to life, but rebirth from moment to moment. So they analyse this kind of process. And you're perfectly correct in saying that philosophically they will analyse the person. As being different, the 20-year-old self to the 30-year-old self is radically different. Sometimes the connections, the condition process, which makes the person between 20 to 30, is hopefully a wholesome process. A, a better self is being formed. You become more mature, more sophisticated, yeah. rather maybe than more... You don't. Maybe yeah. you don't. Maybe it makes them up, uh, 
you perform some unethical actions, and that twenty-year-old virtuous self is. I'm sure I've known people who are quite liked in their twenties, yeah, and then I've met them yeah. again ten years later. And they're a different person, they're, they're and people. they've become kind of greedy and selfish yeah, and yeah. whatever. Yeah. So the problem in, is with Buddhism. There's a you can analyse it on those terms, but then there's of course a juncture between one life and the next, which Buddhists which analyse. is still really radical. Yeah, it's a radical kind of break, but Buddhists want to see it as part of the same process that we're going through from moment to moment. It's just a radical departure. A and we process. see it as hugely radical for us, yeah, and we yeah. think about it all the time. You think about mm. the way that philosophers talk about death, yeah. the highly talk about yeah. all of our being is being mm. towards death and things. But Buddhists may be analysing death from moment to moment, and birth yeah. from moment to moment. They want it makes really more sense. And I think this is my personal opinion, why death is so important for Buddhism mm. is that they want to de-radicalise the idea of yeah. the physical death of the body being their yeah. whole story of death. Of course, yeah, because the history of the person in Buddhism, this process of rebirth, the history is an endless past and an endless future until we achieve nirvana and escape from this process. And that's very, from the cycle very difficult for us to take on board because it's mm. so at odds with the linear single notion of life and death that yeah. so of many of us are... So we have to take on board certain metaphysical and ontological notions in order to get inside what Buddhism is discussing to do with rebirth. That's interesting. I think some Western Buddhists try and get rid of the metaphysical bits. By getting rid of rebirth, in some ways. Yeah, and they talk about rebirth as a metaphor for just the moment-to-moment -moment bits, yeah, and, and they then, try and shed that. Yeah, maybe misusing Buddhism in some ways or reducing it. So I've got to be yeah. careful here, but... Um, yeah, that's a whole other argument, secular yeah. Buddhism, with a, of course, yeah. um, which is very really interesting. It's kind of Buddhism, but it's yes, yeah, it is yeah. um, different. But yeah, in life that is largely in Buddhism, mm. dominated by that entire discourse about mm. rebirth and about the only word we haven't really mentioned here, mm. which is karma. Sure, yeah, yeah. Which so is so going to translate to action. Yeah. So how does actions from one life transmigrate to the next life? This is what much of Buddhist philosophy is concerned with this, with mm. this problem, but it won't it won't posit itself to as a vessel to carry karma. It doesn't want to do that. It cannot do that. For no, way. and it has other means, therefore, yeah. of saying that actions yeah. have, actions well, like ripples, yeah, effects, yeah. and yeah. just like actions have effects mm. in the normal world, like yeah. I, I pick some, <coughs> this thing I think you've been touching, mm -hmm. and drop it and it makes a noise. Yeah. Um, a lot of noise, more than I meant. Yeah, sure. Um, but just like that, if I was to mm. do something awful today, yeah. like, you know, tonight on the way home, mm. maybe I was going to punch mm. a Buddhist monk. Sure. Which I don't normally do. Yeah, but... But say it did, that that would have a whole series and, of... And the day of tomorrow may be a completely different day to the one... It may be somebody who does go today. Yeah. punching and monks. Yeah, a different kind of rebirth in many of us. When he yeah. and friends may meet them, that's not the day that I knew. Yeah. And maybe it, it isn't the day A few months down the line, they may meet yeah. someone. To, yeah. yeah. Um, and that much... And also, doing those kind of actions changes who you are. Yeah. So it's how much, it's how much that mm -hmm. process of karma is internal and psychological mm -hmm. and how much of it is mm -hmm. this rather crude thing where I do a bad thing, yeah. therefore the next day a roof tile falls on my head and sure. decapitates me. Yeah, so the, the process of karma is extremely complex. I bet it's really embedded in Buddhist notions of, of what it is to be a human being. So I was asked recently by students, where does this karma come from? Where is it? Yeah. Kind of in the fabric of the universe or a colleague suggested it's like a, like a type of gravity. Uh, which, which is within, you know, a natural process, not taking yeah. an analogy to The image that I've used that I'm, mm. I'm not sure about because it seems a bit whimsical in mm. a way is something like the kind of cut, the moral nature of things. Mm. Yeah. That's a loaded term. Mm. But the the, the, the uh, mm. idea of things having consequences, mm. which are ethical, yeah. is kind of woven into the metaphysical fabric of the exactly. universe. The universe is ethical. What we do actually matters. Um, and that seems... Yeah. It seems very interesting, it's a slightly funny image, mm -hmm. but it seems to me very religious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Let's get drawn to the terminology. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like it's a very, it makes a claim that uh -huh. the universe is a religious place which has exactly, its quality yeah. to it. And that yeah. seems interesting, especially as Buddhism is often styled as not mm. being religious. <clears throat> of course, yeah, this is a highly ethical notion woven into the universe. And there's mm. very little debate about the existence of karma. To be a Buddhist, you accept karma, you accept the notion that actions have consequences. To deny that is to, in some ways not to be a Buddhist. You could argue or not to be not to be religious if you'd like. The, yeah. the, there's actions have to see the universe as a cold, empty, yeah. meaningless place in which your actions have no meaning. Yeah, that would a nihilist, be, not be a Buddhist. nihilistic it'd be terms a nihilist. You you you're rejecting the Buddhist path, you're rejecting this ethical universe in some ways. Yeah, it's not to say that nihilists can't have yeah. ethics, but they certainly yeah, yeah. can't get them to the same place as Buddhists. Yeah, this is there seems to be some kind of uh, mm. yeah, debate about debate about this kind of whether 
the acceptance of karma is just there. It's not debated. It's not. There's not the philosophical debate. is not about the existence of karma. It's, it's about, about the right. process of rebirth. It's about the and consequences yeah, and but, the process. Yeah. But the fact of it is just. It's it's relatively unquestioned as far as far as I know. There's not great yeah. debates about it. You either accept it or you're not a Buddhist or you're yeah. outside of that community that's mm. accepted. Yeah. So, uh, so, so to conclude, think about life today, I think. Um, in order to make any sense of that, the processes of rebirth and mm-hmm. karma yeah. need to be really clear. Uh, yeah. before, otherwise, we just don't get what Buddhists talk about in terms of life today. Yeah, and to kind of conclude the notion of soteriology, that there has to be a, an escape from this cycle mm. of rebirth. So a notion of salvation. This is what Buddhists are aiming towards. Salvation from this cycle. This is the dilemma post. Actions have consequences. There is rebirth. So what should one do? Yeah. And then you're then left with that. Yeah, and that's a good Buddhist question. Mm. What should I do? Yeah, what should I do? Well, we'll not answer that today. Thank you.